Azrock Fatality. Fatality. What's the origin of Fatality? Hmm. Apparently Fatality, with the one, is the online gamer handle of some guy named Jonathan Wendell. Anyway, we're going to take a look at the AB350 Gaming K4 from ASRock. Now, this is a B350 motherboard for AMD Ryzen. It also supports the AMD A-Series APUs, which may or may not possibly be called Athlon at some point in the future, but I have no official knowledge of that, so I don't know. The uh, AB350 is the sort of middle-of-the-road chipset that does overclocking aimed at desktop boards. It's, you know, the X370 is designed for SLI and more PCI Express connectivity. The AB350 is sort of more the everyman version of the chipset. So it's got a little bit less connectivity, a little bit less features for Ryzen, but this is ASRock's implementation of that chipset. Now there is something that sets this board apart from some of the other 350 boards that I've taken a look at, but before we get into that, let's go on a physical tour of the board. At the top edge of the board, you can see we've got our eight pin CPU power connector. We've got our four pin CPU fan connector, our four DDR4 DIMM slots, which supports up to 3200 although we'll get more into memory testing in a minute. We've got our two four pin RGB fan headers. Now, if you look at the box, the box says there's only one RGB fan header. Technically, one of these two is for the CPU and the other one is for an RGB LED strip. That implies that uh, one of these can deliver more power than the other, but I was not able to confirm. So if you're really you know, enterprising, you probably run one LED strip off of the, uh, the header that's meant for the CPU if you're not using an RGB CPU cooler. Uh, but the other one, of course, supports LED strips and all that because Lord knows we can't have a motherboard in this day and age without having RGB. Ugh. There are also LEDs under the AB350 chipset heatsink um, that you can see. Just below our RGB connectors, we've got our 24 pin ATX power connector, and USB 3.0, that's USB 3.1 Gen 1 front panel connector. Then we've got two SATA 6 gigabit per second ports. Just below that, we've got four more SATA 6 gigabit per second ports that are at a right angle, so you're not going to have any kind of cabling issues or anything like that. And then at the bottom edge of the motherboard, we've got our front panel connections, two more four pin fan headers, a clear CMOS jumper, two USB 2.0 headers, a RS-232 serial port header, a TPM header, and of course our front panel audio. Now the front panel audio header is on an isolated part of the PCB. It's Sound Blaster Cinema 3 implemented with a Realtek 892 codec. Um, it can deliver 7.1 sound, but in order to use 7.1 sound, you have to use both the back panel connectors and the front panel connectors to do it, which is a little weird, but I guess, you know, whatever. It's labeled Elna Audio um, on the motherboard. Let's take a look at the other connections in the back panel. We've got our two USB 2.0 ports, a combo PS2 mouse and keyboard port, then we've got VGA, HDMI, and DVI. Now this is for an A-series APU or a Ryzen CPU that otherwise has integrated graphics. Uh, it does support up to three displays if you're running such a CPU. Then next to that, we've got six USB 3.0 ports, one of which is the reversible USB Type-C port. Then we've got our Realtek uh, 8111 gigabit ethernet implementation. And then of course our Elna Audio that I was mentioning before. Right behind the front panel audio connector, there is another four pin fan header for a total of four on this motherboard. Now in terms of board layout, there are two M.2 slots, the first of which is PCI Express 3.0 by 4, which is just above the graphics card slot, and there's also a PCI Express by 1 interface there. That's through the B350 chipset, of course. Then we've got our PCI Express by 16 slot wired directly into the CPU that is always PCI Express by 16, unless you're running a CPU that doesn't support that, like the Athlon A-Series. Then just below that, we've got our PCI Express 3 uh, slot, which is a PCI Express by 1 and then another PCI Express slot. Now this is the thing that makes this board a little interesting. The other PCI Express by 16 slot is a by four electrical, which you know, you'd expect, and I, I know what you're thinking. That's PCI Express 2.0 by four, right? No, PCI Express 3.0 by four. Wait, how, how'd they do that? You can't, does that mean the other slot runs it by eight or something? No, the, the, the main slot always runs at PCI Express by 16 when you're using, you know, let's say a Ryzen 7 1700. Keep in mind that the Ryzen 7 1700, you've got actually 24 PCI Express lanes total bandwidth. One set of by four lanes goes to the B350 chipset and then from there out to wherever. One PCI Express by four 3.0 connection goes to your NVMe, which ASRock has elected to also wire into a PCI Express slot. So if you're not using NVMe, you can use those PCI Express lanes with a peripheral, like a capture card, ethernet card, you know, PCI Express NVMe, whatever you might happen to run. This is actually pretty cool because, you know, I've got like the older Intel 750 NVMe and those things are just like over the moon awesome. 
and it's hard to use that on Ryzen because most of the time you would have to use that kind of an NVMe, a PCI Express NVMe, actually through the chipset, either the X370 chipset or the B350 chipset. With this, I don't have to do that. I can totally run it that way. It doesn't have to be NVMe though. You could also run 10 gig ethernet, another graphics adapter, whatever. If you are gonna run multiple graphics adapters though, you should know in the UEFI, there is no way to specify which graphics adapter gets initialized first. It's always gonna be this slot, the main slot, then the by four, and then whatever's hanging off the B350 chipset. Finally, on the bottom half of the board, you've got two more PCI Express by one slots and another M.2 that's PCI Express 2.0 by four through the B350 chipset. Now, I just so happen to have this ancient NVIDIA NVS300 PCI Express by one graphics adapter. And so I thought, gosh, this would be awesome. I could have a high speed RAID controller, 10 gig ethernet, and a PCI Express by one adapter with a Ryzen 1700 for like a super powerful home server running ZFS, you know, tons of hard drives, whatever. I was defeated for one reason, one reason only. This motherboard doesn't support ECC memory. I installed Kingston DDR4-2400, the same stuff that we used on our X370 boards. It did not work on this motherboard. I'm hoping that there's gonna be a UEFI update to fix that, but alas. So the next thing you should be thinking is, wait, what about IOMMU? You always go over IMMU stuff, you crazy person. What about IOMMU? This board actually is the best situation with IOMMU on a board that I've encountered so far. And the reason is because of the NVMe slot. So the NVMe is in IOMMU group zero and the X16 slot is in IOMMU group two. So if you put a graphics card in the PCI Express 3.0 by four, which is not an entirely unreasonable amount of bandwidth for a video card, uh, you can use it in Linux and IOMMU works and you can totally use it without an ACS patch. The only catch, the only gotcha in this configuration where you're running a, a graphics card for your virtual machine in the X16 slot and another graphics card in the X4 from the, you know, the NVMe PCI Express 3.0 by four is that the UEFI doesn't let you initialize the PCI Express by four graphics card first. If the primary graphics card that you're using supports being reinitialized by the operating system later, then you will be fine. Uh, I've got an Asus Strix Fury, doesn't really work with reinitialization after the fact. However, if you've got you know, an NVIDIA 960, 970, 980, uh, 1080, 1070, 1060, most of those work fine for reinitialization. But NVIDIA has taken the hostile move of in their drivers, if their drivers detect that they're running under a virtual machine, they just exit. So in your virtual machine, you have to say, hey, lie to the guest operating system and say, that we're not running in a virtual machine. And then the NVIDIA drivers work completely fine. So if you're willing to do that, you can totally use an NVIDIA graphics card and do that and be completely, completely fine. Now, if you're gonna mix Radeon cards, like you're gonna have like an older Radeon card and like an RX 460, 470, 480, 500 series, whatever, you totally can do that and it's fine. And because there is true hardware isolation, you should not run into any problems. As long as your RX series graphics cards support being reinitialized. So how do we know? Like, well, we're gonna have to build a list and that list is probably gonna be in the level one text forums. So if you pick up this motherboard to do IOMMU and you've got a graphics card combination that works, definitely come post in the forums because you can do it without the ACS patch on this motherboard because that PCI Express by four interface that's normally shared with the NVMe is in group zero. Now group zero, everything is in group zero. The, the IOMMU layout on this motherboard is basically the same as every other Ryzen board we've looked at, including X370. The only difference here is that ASRock has wired in the NVMe lanes into a slot and instead of you know, into an NVMe. Well, it's, it's shared, you can use either one. You can put an NVMe in here or a PCI Express device. And because they've done that, we've got another option that isn't quite as terrible as having a graphics card at PCI Express 2.0 through the B350 chipset. And I'll be honest, the, the testing that I've done, having a graphics card run through the B350 chipset, it gets weird sometimes, especially if you're actually doing something in the host operating system that is mildly demanding of the graphics card. This is a much better situation where you've got a, you know, you're basically using your two dedicated links to the CPU for GPUs in the context of two different virtual machines. That is, a, that is a good setup. The other thing is the power delivery system on this board. This is a six plus three phase power delivery system. Running our 1800X Ryzen CPU at 4.1 gigahertz on all cores 
was no problem for this motherboard. It really didn't generate a lot of heat at all. And actually, it's really surprising because the, uh, the heat sinks on this are pretty modest. They're just little pieces of aluminum held in place with springs. So yeah, it, it, it did get kind of toasty at 4.1 gigahertz. That's 1.41 volts. But you know, as long as you've got some airflow around the CPU socket, you should be okay. Other than that, in our preliminary testing, this AB350 motherboard seems to be pretty solid. I'm pretty impressed with it. I would love to see error correction support in the UEFI, but there is P-State overclocking, there is SRIOV, there is IOMMU support. So the UEFI is one of the more full-featured UEFIs that I've seen, especially on a B350 chipset. But for now, we've got more IOMMU testing to do. This should be interesting. I'm Wendell, I'm signing out, I'll see you in the forums. Come help me build a list of graphics cards that work. See ya.